Okay, I've skipped ahead a little bit. I didn't really do much. I just I brought in the front store right there. I called it front store. This is everything except for the tent. And then we have back store, which is just the merchant tent. All of these files are part of what you find in the tutorial scene files. So just go ahead and load that in if you haven't. And the setup is exactly the same. Now, I want to show you something that's really cool. And finally show you something that's fun. So, we have something that allows us to have collision detect as we move the objects. So, let's say that I want to take this pot and I want to place it nicely onto this table. Press S for select. And sometimes it's going to toggle between that and the last tool. So, just make sure that this is actually highlighted up there. Let's kind of marquee select everything right there. Hold down Control, deselect the backdrop. Press T. And sometimes, well, okay. See that? It didn't work right there. Why? Because I had this back store highlighted. So, I know that was kind of a buzzkill, but make sure that whatever the last note is, that is what's highlighted. Let's try that again. S for select. We'll go like that. T. And you don't see anything. <laughs> now, I don't know why it does this. I mean, I'm a very simple 3D artist. And so, um, and so when I press T for transform, you know, I kind of hope for a transform tool. If that doesn't happen, press escape and then press T again, and then it shows up. So not sure why that's the case. I'm sure there's some reason for that, but I just, I don't know. So check this thing over here called use physics and watch this. It's going to think about stuff down here first. It's going to analyze your scene and figure out, you know, all the physics behind this. Once it gets done with that, now I can do that. And look at how amazing that is. Well, we don't want to do that. But <laughs> I can uh, I can move this around and it has collision detect, which is amazing. Now you might be wondering why this is happening. And take a look at the scene graph path down here. I actually have two things selected right now. So as I move things around, it's moving both the cooking pot and the handle at the same time. A better way of doing that is by clicking this topmost cooking pots asset. And now, as you can see, we are actually just moving the whole asset. And as you can see right now, it's still buggy. I mean, this whole thing is, again, just released. So I imagine that over time, this will be improved. But, you know, for right now, just know that that's uh, pretty buggy. If you select the two meshes, though, this usually gets you a better results. I don't know why it's not able to go up like that. But, um, but anyway, it probably works better for something like this book. So let's just select the book. T for transform. Again, we don't see anything for some reason. So escape, T, use physics. And I imagine it'll work better for this book. Let's, let's cross our fingers, see what happens. Okay, so we have that. And yes, see, as you can see, this is way better. Now, for some reason, again, it's not going to go up. We can try to turn on this draw simulation geometry and see what this is seeing when it comes to the actual sim geo. From what I can tell, I mean, at least in this view, it doesn't seem like there's anything that should be giving it issues. So, yeah, like I said, I, I don't really know, but... um. But even when it's just a little bit buggy like that, it's still extremely useful. If you've ever spent hours and hours just trying to get something, you know, many objects to align nicely with another object, then uh, you'll realize how big of a deal this kind of tool is. So sad to say right now, it doesn't, it's pretty buggy, but I'm sure in the future this will be resolved because the guys at side effects are awesome. So there you go. That is how you would go about that.
And uh, I think that's about it for this main tutorial. Let me actually show you a couple more things and then we'll move on. And I was going to show you this idea of right clicking and changing the variance in the viewport, but it looks like I can't see that menu or maybe it's changed or something like that. I'm looking over here at the tutorial and it's cool to like edit the variant like that. I can't seem to find that menu for some reason. So maybe that's another thing in the future that might change. But anyway, I know this <laughs> whole lesson has been a bit of a, a buzzkill. It's still a great feature. I'm really excited for them to just kind of work out the details on that. And um, there you go.